Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at the care plan for Addison's disease, also known as primary adrenal insufficiency. So in this lesson, we'll briefly take a look at the pathophysiology and etiology of Addison's disease. We'll also take a look at subjective and objective data and nursing interventions and rationales. So with Addison's disease, the adrenal glands, which are located above the kidneys, fail to produce an adequate amount of cortisol, aldosterone, and androgens. Cortisol is a glucocorticoid that influences the body's ability to respond to stress and produce energy. Aldosterone is a mineral corticoid that maintains the sodium-potassium balance that regulates blood pressure. Androgens are responsible for sexual development of men and the influence of muscle mass and sense of well-being in men and women. The decrease in adrenal gland function, it may be caused by an autoimmune disease that damages the adrenal glands in which the body attacks the adrenal glands as if it were a foreign body. Damage to these glands may also be a result of severe infection, tuberculosis, or the spread of cancer. So the desired outcome is to maintain adequate hormone levels for optimized ability to create energy and respond to stress and electrolyte balance to regulate blood pressure. So let's take a look at some of the subjective and objective data that your patient with Addison's disease may present with. Now remember, subjective data, these are going to be things that are based on your patient's opinions or feelings. They may include fatigue, lower back or leg pain, abdominal pain, irritability or depression, and reports of significant weight loss. Objective or measurable data includes decreased blood pressure, electrolyte imbalance, including decreased sodium and increased potassium, severe vomiting and diarrhea, and dehydration, and loss of consciousness. Let's take a look at the nursing interventions, which are important when caring for a patient with Addison's disease. Monitor your patient's weight, lack of appetite due to decreased levels of cortisol may cause significant decrease in body weight. Deficiency of cortisol may lead to anorexia and impaired GI function. Encourage oral fluids to help maintain adequate sodium levels and avoid dehydration. Simple stress and overexertion, this can cause life-threatening Addisonian crisis due to the lack of corticosteroids that help the body react to and manage stress. With this in mind, it is so important to minimize stress, help with activities, and provide frequent rest periods. Be sure to monitor your patient's intake and output. Monitor urine for decreased output with a desired output of greater than 30 mLs per hour. Also monitor the concentration and color of the urine, which may be darker. Aldosterone deficiency causes the kidneys to excrete sodium, which may result in salt cravings. Encourage patients to increase salt intake and supplements as necessary to prevent hyponatremia. Encourage patients to eat high protein and low carb snacks and meals as tolerated followed by rest periods to prevent fatigue due to hypoglycemia and to facilitate digestion. Assess vitals including temperature, blood pressure, heart rate, watching for orthostatic changes, and hyperpyrexia. A decrease of blood pressure of 15 millimeters of mercury or more and an increased heart rate may indicate reduced circulation of fluids, such as with dehydration. An increased temperature may be a sign of Addisonian crisis due to hormonal and fluid imbalance. Monitor your patient's EKG 
for signs of hyperkalemia. Lack of aldosterone means increased sodium excretion and increased potassium retention. Signs of hyperkalemia will include peaked T waves and prolonged QRS complex. Monitor for signs of dehydration by noting mucous membranes and skin turgor. Tenting of the skin and dry mucous membranes indicate dehydration, which is commonly due to vomiting and anorexia. As far as medications are concerned, there are a few that are common when treating Addison's disease. k can be given orally or by enema to reduce potassium levels. Cortef or Cortone and Prednisone may be given orally or by IV to increase cortisol levels. Fluoronef is given orally to promote replacement and retention of sodium and water. Okay guys, here is a look at the completed care plan for Addison's disease. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.